To begin, I collect stencils that were created by other artists and no longer needed. I carefully select among them ones that have reusable, sturdy, and interesting shapes. Lately, I have been working more with geometric designs with simple, recognizable shapes and abstract patterns. I prepare the painting surface by applying one or two colors to create a background. For efficiency, I work on multiple canvases at a time, sometimes dozens. Paint is mixed in small roller trays, usually with a generous portion of acrylic medium to create more transparent colors ideal for layering. Once a layer of color is applied, the artwork is put aside to dry. A cycle is established. As paint in the roller tray runs low, more medium and color is added. The exact color mix is carefully and intentionally altered over time. A tray that started as white may end as black. A tray that started as red may eventually become purple, then blue. Small and subtle shifts in the color create dramatic color gradients in the painting over time. The roller application creates a unique aerated paint texture that enhances the color. As I work, I do not think. Although art is often viewed as an intellectual activity, for me the creation of it is mostly meditative and intuitive. The original conceptualization of the art and the post hoc rationalization of it are not necessary for the act of making it, nor the act of enjoying it. I paint what looks nice and feels right, and I know I am finished when looking at the artwork moves something within me. I am not trying to say anything that could be said with words. In college, we were taught about color theory. We learned about groupings, structures, growth. We were exposed to ideals of beauty from around the world. We learned how to listen to clients and satisfy their visions. We went to trades college and studied landscaping. Many of our peers went to art college where they learned little about the actual making of art. Instead, they learned how to justify in words the things that were made. Many would come to the art supply store where we worked, asking for technical advice, and we would have to explain to them in surprisingly simple concepts like the mixing of paint or the preparation of a canvas. But they had read and could regurgitate ideas from the history and philosophy of art that were unknown to us. We did our best to read and learn on our own. One concept in particular that caught our attention was the idea of outsider art. Originally coined to describe the uninitiated works of the mentally ill in asylums, often working with unconventional materials, the term later grew to encompass the creative works of any non-institutionally educated people. In this sense, although the term can sometimes be condescending, the activity of making art far predates the establishing of any higher education. Thus, outsiders far outnumber educated artists throughout history. The difference between art and craft is the difference between elite and common, between masculine and feminine, between the powerful and the useful. We began creating art in earnest while institutionalized in the psychiatric wing of a hospital. Activity times were allotted to patients to create with their hands. Making art became integrated into our sense of mental health and well-being. We were diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder in 2009. The existence of this condition and the nature and meaning of it are debated and contested. Meanwhile, the lived reality of people who experience it is often much richer and more real than can be observed. Within our group, two members in particular adopted art as a hobby and then a profession. They invited others to join them as a way for all of us to bond and understand each other, to communicate and express our individuality. At one point, they looked at me with my stilted and mechanical manners and very logical and methodical way of thinking and joked that I should try, not expecting that I was interested or capable. Before I approached any canvas, I already worked out in my head the process I wanted to follow. I wanted a method that would generate complex abstract images that viewers could interpret like clouds. I began that process when I painted my first work, Pattern Recognition 001, and have continued on that process since. This show includes my latest, Pattern Recognition 085. If you want me to intellectualize my work, or ask for some sort of statement that puts it in the history and philosophy of art, I am not qualified to do so. 
I know that I draw inspiration from other artists, but I can only speak of them from the uninformed perspective of pop culture. I enjoy Mark Rothko, who created imposing and foreboding abstract works. I identify with Yayoi Kasuma, who creates highly structured geometric spaces and uses her work as therapy for her mental health struggles. I know that I do not make art in isolation, even though I don't usually feel that my ideas come from outside myself. I know that many other artists have influenced how I approach my work. The purpose of an artist's statement is often to signify the artist's educational credentials rather than communicate with their audience. I feel that the more important thing I can express is my story, and maybe that will enrich your understanding of how and why I make my art. But honestly, I hope that you're looking at the work more than you're paying attention to this screen. I made it because I wanted to make something aesthetically beautiful that required nothing further than your enjoyment of it. Thank you.